Thelma Harper, who is the owner of Harper's Markets, and Mr. William Bailey, who is an ex insurance executive with Metropolitan Life Insurance Company. Welcome both of you to uh, Thank Black you. Pulse. Thank you Thank very you. much. Ms. Harper, not long ago we spoke with Mr. Walt Ruffin of Ruffin Hoskins and Company CPA yes. firm, mm -hmm. and he talked about the difficult problems that uh, black entrepreneurs have in terms of capitalization, finding enough money to uh, get started. And as the owner of two very prosperous uh, markets in Nashville here, uh, we'd like for you to say something about uh, the problems of capitalization and how you were able to overcome some of the problems. Thank you. I can understand his sentiments completely because in starting a business, it's like the first job. When you go in to apply for work, they t ask for experience. When you're trying to start a business, they ask for resources for collateral. Well, if you've not been in business, it's equivalent to not having had a job and get experience. So normally the resources are not there to secure the funds that you need to start a business. So it's sort of a catch-22 kind of situation. It really is, and unless there's a, a rich relative or someone who's willing to take a chance on you, who thinks that your ideas are good and that, that you are uh, of the quality uh, that they can trust, and that no longer stands. Most all capital has to be collateralized, and it's, the resources are not there, particularly for individuals and for small black businesses. Well, uh, as a man who's concerned primarily with quite a bit of this capital, uh, Mr. Bailey, uh, as an insurance executive, how did you become involved in uh, insurance, and uh, how do you see the problem of capitalization from your point of view? Well, I think it's a significant problem. Uh, I guess I started in the insurance business a little over 20 years ago now, and uh, at that time there were very few blacks in with major insurance companies, and I had after the opportunity was extended to me to come into the insurance business, it just about decided I was going to stay in the safety of teaching school. And Ebony Magazine did an article about blacks who had recently started working with major insurance companies. And that, that article in Ebony Magazine made me give a second thought to it. And I decided after a little bit more soul searching that perhaps this was what I wanted to do. You could go into the insurance business. Yes. Now what made you decide to go into a met into metropolitan life, especially when there were no blacks in uh, white insurances at the time and, and for the most part most black insurance agency agents were involved with black insurance companies? Well I knew that if I was coming into the business I wanted to go with a major company. Uh, at that time, Metropolitan was the largest insurance company in the United States, and so I said if I'm going to play, play, play ball in the big field, I want to be with a, with a large company. And so that was why I decided to come with Metropolitan. They offered, uh, I looked at the contracts that they had to offer, and they looked to be superior to some of the, the other insurance companies, and I decided to come for that reason. Uh, Ms. Harper, uh, in <laughs> reference to capitalization, uh, what would you suggest uh, to uh, some youngsters who would like to perhaps become involved in black entrepreneurship? We do recognize that it certainly takes a lot of money. It does. But we, uh, we there are things outside of money. That's true. I, I think talent has an awful lot to do with it. We started in business more than 20 years ago, and we literally put up everything we had to borrow $1,500. Our business is ser service-oriented, and most black businesses are service-oriented. In the tech, I, I was pleased to hear Mr. Ruffin start in a business that is not service oriented. I would say to those who are interested in going in business, compare the cost and to consider especially the variable cost, the unexpected cost, and look for private funding rather than, say, commercial banks. If they have insurance policies, I would encourage young families they got insurance policies, and that's not to promote Bill's business. Thank he doesn't you. need it. <laughs> but we can borrow on those. That's how Paul and I got started. We had an insurance policy of $15,000 at Faith Bank. Well, I carried the policy to the bank and started crying when the man said he wouldn't uh, lend us money. I said, I've got a policy here that's worth $15,000. Why won't you lend us $15,000? We didn't need $15,000. We need $1,500. And finally, he agreed to look at the policy, and it was there that is a means of funding. Pay those m m uh, payments every month and a substantial, buy a substantial policy and borrow on it to get you started. Normally the, in the interest rate is much lower. And if, if there are other things you have aside from cars that can be used as a resource for borrowing, I think that's a good idea. But insurance, I think, 
is one of the better commodities for borrowing. Very good. Well, uh, Mr. Bailey, as a person who uh, no has commission. access to uh, this resource, uh, what would you consider to be some of the traits? I mean, what are you looking for when a young man or woman uh, comes into your office uh, to make a loan? Uh, are there some basic traits that you could pass on to our audience that they might be able to either cultivate and develop if they don't already have them? Do you mean now to make a loan in what way? I well, uh, well, <laughs> well, not necessarily to make a loan, but uh, when you talk about being an entrepreneur, what are some of the traits that you would consider? Oh, to be I, I would think that uh, self-discipline perhaps is the most viable of all traits. I talk to many young people that talk about wanting to start their own business and think that once they get cap, if they can get it, once they get the doors open, that uh, they are the boss and that they don't have any responsibilities after that part but to, but to count the money. And it doesn't work like that. To become an entrepreneur like Thelma Hopp, like uh, Walt Ruffin, like any of the people that you're talking about, they have to pay a supreme sacrifice. Mm -hmm. The time that they spend, they are, they are at their jobs before the employees come, and they usually leave after those employees leave. Young people.